Hey friends I've met and friends I haven't met. So um, before I do anything else I would really like to pray because this video has been really hard to articulate and to um, know what to share. So um, I'm just going to pray. Lord Jesus I give you this video. I pray you'd be glorified through my story because it's your story that you have written and you have been faithful to um, redeem. And so God, I pray for um, all the people that are listening to this, that you would um, give them hope. And I pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. So um, I feel like the Lord's really been showing me how often I, um, I find myself envying other people. And I think the root of that goes back to even my childhood and youth. And a big reason for that is because I experienced trauma. And it was really easy for me to start envying other people's stories and envying the way that they seem to have way less baggage than me and less difficulties. And um, even though I know that's an illusion, it was still painful. And um, it's interesting as I was studying verses for this video that um, a couple psalms that I really like actually have a context of envy, even in the verses that I memorized, um, the verses surrounding them talk about envying the wicked and that illusion of um, the, the other people being blessed when really um, it's nearness with God that is, that is the greatest good. And so um, I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 73. And um, I actually shared um, from Psalm 37 in a previous video. And it's interesting because that was one of the other ones that has those verses in the context about envy. So um, I'll give you a couple verses for context and then I'll read the verses that I memorized a long time ago in my life. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And I think as I've been um, thinking about my story and the ways that God has met me even in the worst places, um, I've really come to believe the words that Joseph said to his brothers, um, even though they were the ones that betrayed him, that what they intended for harm, God intended for good, for the saving of many lives. And so as I um, look at these places in my story where I see pain and I see brokenness, I also see the goodness of God and the redemption in, in the midst of all of those places. And um, I love that Jesus, when he announced his ministry, actually... Um, quoted Isaiah 61, he read on the scroll and said, Today this is fulfilled in your hearing. And it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and everlasting joy will be theirs. And it's interesting as I'm reading these, seeing that word portion. And um, I think that I've looked at my life often and wish that my portion were different. But ultimately my portion is actually the Lord. That He is the one who heals. He is the one that saves. And um, He's the reason I'm here. Honestly, I know that by the grace of God I'm here and um, I'm being made whole. Um, and by the grace of God, I have um, been more made more passionate through the midst of these wounds that I carry because I see the need for truth um, when people are um, struggling to believe that and, and have been told lies. 
And so um, I love these verses in Isaiah 62, the chapter afterward. It says, For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet. Till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You will be called a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will, not, no longer will they call you deserted or, your name, or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. Those words mean my delight is in her and married. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a maiden, so your sons marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. And I see that in those places where um, I have been told lies about who I am, God has come in and spoken life over me. He said, you're not desolate, you're not deserted, you are the one I delight in, you are my beloved. And um, because of those parts of my story, I've had to receive these things from the Lord and to understand them and embrace them at a greater depth than I would have otherwise. And because of that, my calling is to speak those things over others, to um, lead them to the heart of God and to um, help them believe that there is hope, that um, there is a way to heal. And so um, in envying, I have often taken away um, an opportunity to praise for what he's done. And um, and I've also not allowed myself to hope that he could continue to heal even in the places where I still feel raw, in the places where these things still come up. Um, I love these verses and they're at the end of Isaiah 61. They say, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the sun soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow. So the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. And um, I just love that picture of um, things springing up. And I, um, I love the verses in Isaiah. It's multiple places where it talks about um, pouring streams out in the desert. And I've seen that in my life. I've seen the way that God has poured out his grace in my heart and poured out his love in places that were barren and desolate and caused them to grow and caused flowers to spring up, caused fruit to come even from the worst things. And so um, I wanted to pray for us that we would, in the midst of this time with COVID and everything else, that we would have hope that whether it's um, the issues with this or abuse or health issues or um, loss, that, that God is God still and that he has a redemptive story. And um, if there are things that need to be grieved, grieve them. Um, I have a whole video about grief and lament. And another one about identity in Christ. If, if there are truths that you're struggling to believe about yourself, um, check out the rest of these videos. Um, so many of them are linked to my story, basically all of them. So I feel like in sharing this, um, I can't talk about all of it, but I've already talked about a lot of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. This is all because of you. And so I pray you would use this, use these truths, and continue your work. And I thank you that you are doing a good work in the lives of your people, even the places where I can't see it right now, Lord. I believe you're working and you will work because you've worked in the past. You've healed me in the past, and so you're going to keep healing me. So for anyone else who's struggling to find hope right now, God, I pray for hope. I pray your spirit would be in us streams of living water that, um, come to those places of dryness and, and desolation and refresh them and cause life to spring forth. We thank you for your words, Lord, and we pray that they would be words of life for all of us. Pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks so much for listening.